Hello, fourth grade. In today's video, we are going to be talking about probability. Um, probability is a unit that we did not get to cover when we were in school together. Um, we did practice answering some of the questions when they would pop up on the spiral reviews that we were doing, but we didn't get to cover it as a unit all by itself. So this is probability, it's SOL 4.13. Um, you guys in fourth grade have to be able to model and determine all possible outcomes of a given simple event where there are no more than 24 possible outcomes. So 24 would be the most possible outcomes that you would see um, using coins, number cubes, spinners, different kinds of manipulatives. Now, when it says possible outcomes, remember that outcomes are the things that can happen. So if I am going to flip this coin one time, let's think about the possible outcomes. I flip it one time, it could land on heads or it could land on tails. So how many possible outcomes are there? There are two possible outcomes. All right, if I am going to roll a die, one time I could roll a one, a two, a three, a four, five, or a six. Those are my possible outcomes. How many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six possible outcomes. All right, if I have a spinner and I'm going to spin the spinner one time, let's think about the possible outcomes. It could land on pink. I'm only spinning it one time. It could land on yellow. It could land on one of the blue sections. It could land on one of the orange sections. Um, or it could land on this green. So let's go back and count the number of possible outcomes. One, two, three, four, five. There are five possible outcomes. Now, if we were going to spin the spinner more than one time, um, then we would have to consider that. But in each one of these examples, we were flipping the coin one time, rolling the die one time, spinning the spinner one time. Um, in fifth grade, you'll start branching, you'll make what's called a tree diagram, and you'll be looking at doing these things more than one time, and you'll have to make a tree diagram for that. Probability is the likelihood of an event happening, how likely it is that something will happen. And in fourth grade, we start writing um, that as a fraction and so your numerator would be the favorable outcome. That is what you want to happen. Um, reaching into a bag and pulling a red marble. Red would be the favorable outcome. That's what we want to happen. Um, and then the denominator is going to be your total possible outcomes. So we're going to look at a few examples of these. All right, one thing that you guys have to be able to do is determine the outcome of an event that is least likely to occur or most likely to occur when there are no more than 24 possible outcomes. So some examples of those types of questions would be um, like this one. Laura is going to spin the arrow, which best describes her chance of the arrow landing on the number eight. All right, well, there are one, two, three, four, five number eights on the spinner. That's the favorable outcome. And then let's see how many sections we have in all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
All right, so there are five, she has a five eighths chance. Four eighths would be half. Does she have more than half or less than half? More than half of the spinner has the number eight on it. So that means her chances would be likely. All right, next, Kelly put these beads in a bag. If Kelly randomly draws a bead out of the bag, which of the following statements would be true? It is likely that Kelly will draw out a yellow bead. Well, how many yellow beads are there? There's one out of three, six, one, eight. She has less than, less than half of the beads are yellow. So is it going to be likely that she's going to pull out a yellow bead? No. All right. It is equally likely that Kelly will draw out a red bead or a green bead. Equally likely means there would be the same number. And we're looking at red and green. So we have one, two, three red. One, two, three green. So we're going to put a question mark by this one. It's, that's a possibility. Let's keep checking. It is impossible for Kelly to draw out a blue bead. Well, it's not impossible because there's one blue bead in the bag. So it could happen. She could reach into the bag and pull out the blue one. So it's not going to be that one. Um, it is certain that Kelly will draw out a red bead or a green bead. Well, for that to happen, all of the beads would have to be either red or green. And we have some other colors in there. So we can't say that she's certain to pull out a red or a green. Um, equally likely would mean that we have the same number of red and green. There were three of each. So B is our best choice for that one. All right, we're going to try one more of those. Todd has the following folders in his backpack. Two blue, two red, two yellow, two purple. The folders are all the same size and shape. Todd reaches into his backpack and selects one folder without looking. What is the likelihood the folder will be green? So the favorable outcome or what he is wanting to happen is green. Well, does Todd have any green folders at all in his book bag? No, so that is impossible. Right, another thing that you guys have to do with probability in fourth grade, not just deciding if it's likely or unlikely, um, you have to be able to recognize the fraction that goes with that, um, with that chance of the event occurring. So write the probability of a given simple event as a fraction. You have to be able to write the probability as a fraction. And that where it says... Um, there are no more than 24 possible outcomes. That means your denominator would be 24 or less. And then determine the likelihood of an event occurring. How likely is it to happen? And relate it to its whole number or fractional representation. So um, that is about um, using your probability scale. And we looked at this a few times when we were working on our spiral review, knowing that if there's a zero chance of an event occurring, then we would say it is impossible. If your fraction is equal to one whole, so it could be two halves or three thirds or four fourths or five fifths, if you get a fraction that's equal to one whole, then the likelihood of the event occurring would be certain. If you get a fraction that is equal to one half, like four eighths or three sixths or two fourths, then the event has an equally likely chance of occurring. If when you write your fraction and you compare it to one half, if your fraction is less than half, so it would be in this range, 
then that means the um, likelihood of the event occurring is unlikely. If your fraction, when you compare it to half, if it's greater than half, so it would be in this range, then we would state that the um, likelihood is likely to occur. So it's all about um, fractions and comparing them to half, seeing where they fall on the probability scale. So let's look at some examples. Test scores from Lane's math class were two A's, five B's, and four C's. What is the probability that Lane will make or does make, that's um, a typo, an A? All right, so how many A's did Lane make? That's the favorable outcome, so that's your numerator. Then to get your total number, you have to add up 2 plus 5 plus 4. 5 and 4 make 9, and 2 more would be 11. So it's 2 elevenths. So the probability that Lane made an A was 2 elevenths. Now, 2 elevenths is less than half. So it would be unlikely. You got to think about what half of 11 is. Five and a half, but we only have two. So it's less than half. We looked at that when we were comparing fractions and using benchmark fractions. All right, the letter tile shown below were placed in a bag. What is the probability of drawing a tile from the bag that has an X written on it? Write your answer as a fraction. So X is the favorable outcome. There's one, two. So your numerator is two. Now we have to figure out what the total is. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. 2 twelfths, what's half of 12? Half of 12 is 6, but we only have 2. So do we have more than half or less than half? We have less than half. So that also makes this unlikely. All right, we'll try one more of those. Becky has a box with 11 buttons that are the same size and shape. There are two yellow, three red, and six blue buttons in the bag. And then it's giving you a key to use to figure out which button is which color. If she takes one button out of the box without looking, what is the probability that the button will be blue? So the favorable outcome is blue. It says there are six blue buttons, so that's the numerator. And then we have to figure out how many buttons there are in all. Four, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we found our fraction. Now let's think about the likelihood of it occurring. What is half of eleven? We've already figured that one out on the previous page. Five and a half, but we have six. Six is greater than five and a half. So that means six elevenths is greater than half. So this one is likely to occur because more than half of the buttons are blue. All right, I want to show you guys a couple of um, probability scale type questions. 
Sally has a bag of marbles. Some of the marbles are purple and the rest of the marbles are white. Which letter best represents the probability that Sally will pull either a purple or white marble from the bag? So the favorable outcome is for her to reach into the bag and draw out either a purple or a white marble. And in her bag, she has purple and white. That's it. No other colors. So how likely is she to reach into the bag and pull out a purple or a white marble? Because there are no other colors in the bag, that's her only choices. This one would be a one. It would be certain to happen. All right, Tanya has red pencils and blue pencils. The pencils are all the same shape and size. Tanya is more likely to pick a red pencil than a blue pencil. So that has to mean that there are more red than blue. So which letter best represents the probability that Tanya will pick a blue pencil? So there's gonna be more, she's more likely to get a red. So that means there's more red. And it doesn't say that there's the same number of red and blue. If there were the same number, then it would be half. We just know that there's more red than blue, and we want to know what the probability is that she's going to pick a blue, so there's not as many blue. So it would have to be here. It doesn't say that there's an equal number, and we know that there are some blue in the bag, so it wouldn't be impossible. So this would be our only other choice. She's unlikely to get a blue because there are not as many of them. Pete has a fair number cube like this with sides labeled one through six. Which letter best represents the probability that Pete will roll a number greater than two? So the only numbers on here greater than two are three, four, five, and six. So there are one, two, three, four numbers greater than two, and there are six numbers in all. Half of six would be three, so the fraction that's equal to half is three-sixths. But we have four six, so do we have more than half or less than half? We have more than half. It's not six six. If it were six six, then it would be here on the certain. So this is the only choice that we have. Um, it would be likely to occur. Vera has a fair number cube with sides labeled one through six. Which letter best represents the probability that Vera will roll a number greater than six? Do we have any numbers greater than six on this die? No. So what's that one going to be? Impossible. All right, guys. We've got one more um, type of question to look at, and then I'll let you guys practice. Um, in fourth grade, you have to be able to create a model or practical problem to represent a given probability. Using the key, label the shapes so the probability of choosing a chocolate chip cookie is unlikely. So if it's unlikely, that means we need fewer fewer of them. Let's see how many cookies we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the denominator or the in all is nine. And half of nine, remember that would be equally likely if it were half. So we want to go less than half. Half of nine is four and a half. So we could do either one cookie as chocolate chip two, three, even four um, would be less than half. So I'm going to make two of them chocolate chip 
And then it really doesn't matter how many of the other ones, um, as long as your chocolate chip um, it is fewer. Snickerdoodle, 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 snickerdoodle. So I only have two chocolate chips, so that makes it unlikely. All right, then we have some tiles. <clears throat> um, and these letters represent colors. Um, I drew a probability scale here to help us. It says drag tiles. We have to drag these tiles into the bag to make five tenths green, two tenths pink, and one tenth orange. So that tells me I should have a total of 10 tiles in the bag when I'm finished. So we're going to go ahead and plug in what we know. We know we need five tenths to be green. So that would be the G. One, two, three, four, five. That takes care of the five. We'll take care of the 10 when we're finished. All right, we need two tenths pink. So I need two pink ones. And then we need one tenth to be orange. So right now we should have five, six, seven, eight tiles in the bag. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. However, I know I need my in all amount to be 10. I cannot add any more of these colors. Is there a color that I have not used yet? blue. We've got to fill in with the blue. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So how many blue ones do we need to get from eight to ten? Two. So we're going to go back and double check. We should have ten tiles in all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Five should be green, one, two, three, four, five. Two should be pink, one, two, and one should be orange. The other two were just space fillers to give us that in all amount. But we were not allowed to add any more of the, these colors because that would have changed the fractions. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. Take care. Bye-bye.